calculate the value of p in the table so what is the value of p 0 0.07 0 0.08 0 0.09 or you skip the equation let's find out so 5.1 we were supposed to define the reaction rate i'm gonna leave that one for you and the question that follows 5.2 write down the independent variable for this investigation so let's go ahead and read through our question statement and sort of figure out what is happening the reaction between excess dilute hydrochloric acid and sodium thiosulfate is used to investigate factors that influence the reaction rate we are given the equation as you can clearly see the concentration of hcl used is one mole per decimeter cube the same volume of hcl is used in each run the time taken for the cross on the on the paper under the flask to become invisible is measured okay the below the table below summarizes the reaction conditions and the results of the experiment so okay we have the volume of sodium thiosulfate that of h2o that of na2s2o3 uh, the concentration and the time 5.2 write down the independent variable so the independent variable is the variable you are willingly changing and then the dependent variable is the variable you are measuring okay here we're measuring the time it takes for the cross to be invincible the variable that you are willingly changing is the volume of sodium thiosulfate so 5.2 uh, the answer here is volume the volume of sodium thiosulfate okay na2s2o3 okay so we are willingly changing that volume and we are measuring the time so we can say that uh, the volume of sodium thiosulfate is our independent variable okay let's take a look at 5.3 5.3 we're supposed to find the value of p in our table okay that's the, the determining the value of p is actually not an easy task yeah i had to spend a lot of time trying to figure out okay but then let's pay our attention to run one if you pay our attention to run one we are given the volume and the concentration if we were to find the number of moles there we would have 0 0.13 multiplied by 50 divided by 1000 let me put this in my calculator so 0 0.13 multiplied by 50 divided by 1000 is 0 0.0065 so in 50 centimeter cube of sodium thiosulfate there is 0 0.0065 moles how many moles are we gonna have let's take a look at round two in round two we're gonna have 0 0.0065 multiply by 40 divided by 50 this is because now we're no longer using a volume of 50 but a volume of 40 okay so 0 0.0065 multiplied by 40 divided by 50 will give us 0 0.0052 so these are the number of moles of sodium uh, thiosulfate we have in run 2 to find the concentration in run 2 we'd say the concentration is equal to number of moles divided by volume the number of moles is 0 0.0052 okay the volume is not 40 the volume is still 50 because volume is additive so 40 plus 10 should give us 50 so we have 50 times 10 to the minus 3 okay let me put that in my calculator uh, when i do that i get 0 0.1 just like we have here okay so let's go ahead and determine p so for p the number of moles in run 3 we need the number of moles in run 3 first so those number of moles are going to be equals to 0 0.0065 multiplied by 30 divided by 50 okay so 0 0.0065 multiplied by 30 divided by 50 will give us 0 0.0039 so the concentration in reaction not reaction 3 but run 3 will be number of moles divided by volume this is 0 0.0039 the volume is additive 
we have 30 plus 20 so that you will be 50 okay 50 times 10 to the minus 3 that is the same as dividing by 1000 okay when i put that in my calculator i get 0 0.078 so p should be equals to 0 0.078 that is the concentration of sodium thiosulfate in run 3 that is 5.3 <laughs> let's go ahead and do 5.4 so 5.4 when 0 0.21 grams of sulfur has formed in run 1 the cross becomes invisible calculate the average rate the average reaction rate with respect to sodium thiosulfate in grams per second okay so we want uh, the reaction rate in grams per second so that is the change in mass divided by the change in time let's take a look at the information we have for run one we're given the time is 20.4 seconds so we know that uh, delta t is equals to 20.4 seconds so we're just looking for the change in mass but we know the number of moles we started with in run one right so in run one the number of moles we started with we calculated it in 5.3 and uh, we started with 0 0.0065 moles so let's find the mass we started with so that using this information we have about sulfur we can find the mass we ended up with or not the mass we ended up with but the mass of sulfur that was formed okay so in run one the mass so we're gonna have number of moles is equal to the mass divided by uh, the molar so the mass will be the number of moles multiplied by the molar mass okay this is the mass we started with mass initial the number of moles 0 0.0065 multiplied by uh, the molar mass so sodium 23 multiplied by 2 plus so that is Na2S2 sulfur is 32 so I have 32 multiplied by 2 plus 16 multiplied by 3 okay i already have the answer but i'm just gonna put it in my calculator once more to verify okay so 23 multiplied by 2 32 multiplied by 2 16 multiplied by 3 i'm getting 1.027 1.027 grams initially i got one point zero four seven eight so i'm just gonna put it back and see where i'm making the mistake um i think this one is the correct one the one i got initially was wrong i used 0 0.0066 instead of 0 0.0065 uh let me see yeah it's 0 0.0065 but so this is the mass initial this is the mass initial okay we need to be aware of that so now we are know that we know that for sulfur we have a mass of 0 0.21 grams that is formed if we convert this mass to number of moles mass divided by molar 0 0.21 divided by 32 so what is 0 0.21 divided by 32 i'm getting 0 0.006 um 0 0.0066 okay 0 0.0066 uh, there's some issue here okay uh, but let's just get on let's just get on um how do we move now we have the number of moles of sulfur that were formed okay 0 0.0066 with our reaction let's look at the balancing coefficient uh, the balancing coefficient of sodium thiosulfate is one that of sulfur is one so we started with 0 0.0065 moles of sodium thiosulfate and 0 0.0066 of sulfur was formed okay and the balancing coefficient we have one is to one so the entire sodium thiosulfate was used in reaction one not reaction one but run one okay so we know that the mass of sodium thiosulfate goes to zero so what are we gonna have we're gonna have the reaction rate being equals to uh, the change in mass divided by 
the time. The change in mass, we started with a mass of 1.027 and we're ending up with a mass of zero because all number of moles have been converted to sulfur divided by the change in time which is 20.4 so let me go ahead and put that in my calculator i am getting 0 0.05 grams per second um yeah there we go that is the reaction rate in with respect to sodium thiosulfate 5.5 let's take a look at 5.5 sketch the maxwell boltzmann distribution curve for the reaction at 20 degrees celsius label this curve as a on the same side of axis draw the curve that will be obtained at 35 degrees celsius and label it b okay i think uh, these are easy marks to get uh, let me show you why because it's the basics. It has nothing to do with this equation per se. It's just the basics. Okay? They just want to they just want to see if you know what your graphs looks like if temperature is increased. So here we're gonna have uh, the kinetic energy on the x-axis. And then on the y-axis, we have the number of molecules. We have the number of molecules on the y-axis. Okay, now we need to increase the temperature. What happens when you increase your temperature? The peak will go down and shift to the left. That's what the examiner is expecting to see, right? The peak goes down and it shifts to the left. So that's exactly uh, what you're supposed to have on your graph. Something like this. So it goes down and it shifts to the left right yeah as you can see uh, this is a and this is b b is for the five degrees Celsius. yeah so that's what happens when you increase the temperature you will have something that looks like that yes we have a and b can we move to 5.5 yes we can explain the effect of temperature on the reaction rate in terms of the cooling theory okay we know fully well that when you increase the temperature, the average kinetic energy of the molecules is going to increase. More molecules are going to have kinetic energy equals to or greater than the activation energy. More effective collisions per unit time. The rate of reaction increases. Basics.